Hello and welcome to The Truth About Tooth Decay, a podcast by the Oral Health Foundation and proudly supported by Colgate. We have done three episodes so far where we've looked at tooth decay, how it affects your health and what you can do to prevent it. After recording those episodes, we decided that even though we'd touched on fluoride a little bit, it really deserved its own episode. So that is what we're going to be focusing on today. We're going to touch on what fluoride is, why it's so important in protecting your teeth against tooth decay and where you can find it. A very quick safety reminder that we are following all of the coronavirus restrictions that are in place at the time of recording, meaning that all of the guests have been recorded remotely safe at home. My name is Sophie and I'm joined by Karen from the Oral Health Foundation. She is one of our dental helpline advisors and she has done the last three episodes with us and if you haven't listened to those, please go back and give them a listen. So Karen, let's just dive straight in. I know fluoride itself it can be a little bit of a tricky subject and you know um i am not myself a dental expert and you, you know my knowledge of fluoride is very very basic and that is basically just that it's in toothpaste <laughs> that's about the extent of the knowledge that i have on the subject so any information that you're able to give us today i have no doubt is going to be super super helpful and really really informative um so let's get straight into it what exactly is fluoride yeah well fluoride is a mineral and it is found naturally in in water uh, and in many foods, um, and as we said before, in, in your cup of tea. So, um, but, the, you know, sometimes it's added to water, sometimes it's in the natural spring water. So it is something that's all around, but mainly most of our fluoride comes from the toothpaste that we use. Um, fluoride has been instrumental in reducing dental decay. It remineralizes which means it hardens the enamel on our teeth and makes it more resistant to dental decay so as as we've spoken about in the previous podcast when we're looking at tooth decay we're looking at all of these tools that we can use to help us to um, prevent it so fluoride is hugely important now Fluoride in toothpaste, there are optimum levels depending on the age that you are. So when we're looking at um, small children, so not to three years old, we're looking at a thousand parts per million fluoride. Now that sounds really complicated and you know, how am I gonna remember this? But what you just need to do is just look on the ingredients label and it will say fluoride and it'll have a number with PPM after it. So you're looking for a thousand parts per million up until the age of three. Over the age of three, and that's right up to adulthood, um, the level of fluoride is 1350 to 1500 parts per million. So again, on the um, ingredients label. Some children may find that adult toothpaste is a little bit too strong, a bit minty for them, but you can find age appropriate um, fluoride toothpaste in the supermarket that might be a little bit milder flavor for them. So, you know, they can use your toothpaste, but they don't have to if they don't like the taste of it. So when you're looking for a toothpaste, you don't have to spend hundreds of pounds on it. You don't have to, you know, have the ones that uh, in the fancy packaging if you don't want to, but just make sure it has the good fluoride. If you're looking for something extra in a toothpaste, by all means, you know, whitening, desensitizing gum condition all of those are available but just make sure it has fluoride in it it's so really it is a lot more important than i maybe initially thought and you know we talked a lot about what tooth decay is over the last episodes that we've done and um went into a little bit of detail about the enamel the dentine how the tooth decay affects it and so the fact that the fluoride its main job really i guess is hardening that enamel and that in turn it makes it harder for the tooth decay to actually get into the tooth and cause the more serious damage it is such a simple thing that really it's it's doing a lot of work to help our our teeth and our mouths yeah i mean that's what we're looking for i mean we're looking to reduce um the problems that we might have um from from dental decay so um i mean it's not going to completely prevent it, but you know, it can have an effect. If you've got the very, very beginnings 
of dental decay, perhaps in the biting surface of a tooth. The, the use of a fluoride toothpaste can almost that can remineralize that area so that you don't need to have a filling. So it is very, very useful. And like I say, it, it has revolutionized um, the, the, the decay rates in this country. And often also where in places that have it um, added to their water, the decay rates are lower still because obviously all the water that is used and, and drunk um, contains it as well. So um, you're very lucky if you live in a, a, a fluoridated water area. Um, certainly here in Warwickshire, where we're based, um, we have very, very low decay rates. I think one of the stories that has stuck out to me the most comes from one of the dentists at the foundation who was telling me all about when they had their practice up uh, up in Birmingham. They could tell what side of the street a child lived on looking at their teeth because one side of the street had fluoridated water and one didn't and the fact that it makes that much of a notable difference that just by looking at the surface of someone's teeth they were able to tell what side of the street they came from that really puts it in perspective to me just how big a difference fluoridated water and, and fluoride can have on the enamel it is, it is absolutely, yeah, totally, totally. And it just brings it um, into your mind that it just has that much of an effect. Um, I mean, there are some people that might need a little bit more than we're talking about in our general everyday um, toothpaste. Um, there, there are higher fluoride uh, toothpaste that are used on the recommendation of a dentist. So your dentist will look at your decay rate, look at the other factors that might be causing you to be at higher risk, and then may recommend that you have a higher fluoride toothpaste. So we're kind of looking at the, the people in that category would be people with a history of um, decay in the past. The elderly, generally because as we get older, our saliva glands don't uh, produce as much saliva, so our mouths tend to be drier. So as we talked about before, um, the saliva is the protective mechanism. So if it's not there, then our teeth are a little bit more at risk. Also around the necks of the teeth where you've had some gum recession, they're more susceptible to, to decay. So the elderly might need it. Um, People who take medication that contains sugar, I mean, we should always ask for um, sugar-free medication if possible. Sometimes it's not. So um, that would be a, a person that would be looking for it. Uh, people with dry mouth, again, the same as sort of the elderly. However, there are many, many medications um, that cause dry mouth. Um, far too many to, uh, to mention. But if you are taking uh, prescribed medication, it's, it's worth looking at on the you know side effects and dry mouth is probably on there and you just feel that you don't have quite enough saliva so you may need the extra fluoride to protect um again people having treatments for cancer that can cause dry mouth as well so we're looking at everything like that that is going to put a barrier um against the saliva protection so people with uh health issues diabetes they might need extra help because they don't heal quite as well so they might need it um things like orthodontic treatment they we're having the, the brackets on your teeth can sometimes make it very difficult to clean your teeth quite as well because you can't get round them so again they may suggest using a, um, a higher fluoride um so you know those, those kind of things can be an adjunct to the toothpaste um that, that we might normally be using the, the fluoride in the water is just a little bit extra to just get that little extra help but that needs to be um, under the supervision of a dentist so if you think you have any of those problems it's definitely worth discussing that with your dentist on your regular checkup and if they think it's appropriate for you then they will they will uh, no exactly yeah and it's worth mentioning as well just because you might be a diabetic say that doesn't mean that you definitely absolutely need a high fluoride toothpaste. It just means that you might be a little bit more susceptible to tooth decay. Mm. And so high fluoride toothpaste is a discussion that you might want to have. It doesn't mean that you necessarily yeah. have to go and request it. 
It just means that with certain conditions like diabetes or dry mouth or, like you said, medications with sugar in, it just means that you might be a little bit higher risk than someone that isn't on medication that has sugar in it or isn't diabetic and it could just be an extra little step to take to prevent tooth decay before it becomes an issue. And if you if you if you speak to your dentist about it, they will be able to tell you whether you are um, you know, more at risk and you don't need it unless they tell you you need it, basically. There, there are other um applications as well. So there's a fluoride varnish that dentists often paint onto children's teeth. So if you imagine the biting surface of the teeth is always where the food is going when we're chewing at the back. So we cut with the front teeth, we tear with the incisors, and then the teeth at the back of the grinding teeth that grind the food down so that we're able to swallow it. So things get stuck in those fissures, those little grooves in, in the teeth. So those are more susceptible, certainly with younger children, to dental decay. So often what a dentist will do at their regular checkup is just paint some fluoride varnish onto those biting surfaces just to give an extra boost to try and mineralize those areas. So because we're looking at, at things getting stuck in those areas, just be mindful of, of things that people, that, that all of us, but especially children may be eating. Uh, dried fruit, raisins are terrible for getting stuck and they're very high sugar as well. So those can be avoided, that's better. Um, so that will help to protect if they put the, the varnish on. So that will often be offered um, at every checkup. It's tasteless, isn't it, fluoride? So, I mean, they add flavours to the varnishes and things for children when they put it on children's teeth, but fluoride itself doesn't actually have a taste, does it? it um, yeah, I mean, it's quite a, th the, 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 the varnish that they put on, so it's a varnish, but it, it's, um, it can be thicker than that, so it sort of stays on, but it's not going to stay on until the next checkup, it's just going to stay on long enough for the fluoride to help the enamel to remineralize, so it's not something that's going to stay on there forever or anything, but uh, it's just, again, another thing that we have in our armory to try and, um, prevent fillings early in life so that we can get the children into a good habit and as they as they get older and the um the rate of decay perhaps with drops <clears throat> we've given them the best start that we can so say if you were advised that you needed to get a prescription toothpaste because of the the high fluoride content that you might need to prevent the tooth decay um I'm trying to think of the right way to phrase this. Could you just uh, double up on your regular toothpaste and just use a lot more and, uh, in theory, get a lot more fluoride that way? No, no it, it only has that. So using a you know, 1,500 parts per million toothpaste twice doesn't give you, you know, double the amount. It's still only that. It's the content. So it, the higher fluoride will be a higher all right it will be more parts per million in that paste um so it, it will be used like that so it doesn't work like that <laughs> no it's not going to work like that unfortunately no it's a specific product and um often the dentist will have it actually in the practice for you to buy but if not they will um you know give you a prescription um if necessary so circling back around to other places that you might find fluoride like water um they make other products with fluoride in, don't they? Like mouthwashes? Yeah, if you choose to use a mouthwash, that's absolutely fine. But just watch at the times that you're using it. So as we said, don't, don't use it at the same time as brushing your teeth. So if you want to use it um, after breakfast, after lunch, after your tea even, um, it will refresh your mouth. And again, it will help to bring the pH level uh, back up to neutral in your mouth. So it's actually helping your saliva to protect your teeth as well. So it is quite a good, um, a, a good tool to use. Um, during those times. So fluoride in the water is not necessarily something that I've thought about before and I wouldn't say I'd, I'd ever thought about it until we sat down and started discussing tooth decay um, but if someone wanted to find out how much fluoride was in their water or if it had been added to their supply how would they go about that? 
if it's if it's added to water it'll be one part per million um i would say you're probably going to have to get in touch with your water authority um to see if it's actually added to your water i mean obviously we know that it is um in our area but if somebody wanted to check i think that's probably the best way to do it um but you don't need to change the toothpaste that you're using or how you use your toothpaste if it is added you don't need to reduce anything it's just an add-on to to, uh, to help wow and just that one part per million can do so much yeah yeah it is it, 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 it's I can't think of anything else that is so dramatic and in helping the fight against tooth decay. It's, um, you know, obviously it was discovered a long, long time ago and I don't think anything else has revolutionized dentistry as much as that. So it, uh, it, it was a great, great find, whoever did it. Yeah, absolutely. A, a fantastic find. <laughs> well, you know, we have discussed an awful lot over the series and we have discussed what tooth decay is how it affects your teeth how it can affect all areas of your health including your mental health and what we can do to help prevent it we've touched on in this episode fluoride where that can be found how useful it actually is uh, which turns out very <laughs> and this podcast has been uh, sponsored by colgate as part of our truth about tooth decay campaign that we've been running um, at the foundation if we've mentioned something in any of these episodes that you think you would like to look into a little bit further, you can just Google Truth About Tooth Decay and go to our website and there is an awful lot more information on there that hopefully will answer any questions that you have. If you have a more specific question that can't be answered by either this podcast or our website, Karen, where can people find you on the helpline? Well, they can either call us, um, we're open Monday to Friday, nine to five. Um, the telephone number is 01788 539 um, Or have a look on our website, which is www.dentalhealth.org. Um, the, obviously the telephone number is on there as well, if you didn't get that down. But also there is a link to the helpline, so you can email us. So if you don't want to speak to us, uh, you might have heard enough of me, so you probably don't want to uh, speak to me. But you can send me an email and what myself or one of my colleagues will be happy to answer it. Thank you for that, Karen. As always, you can find the Oral Health Foundation on social media. Uh, on Twitter and Facebook, we are at Dental Health Org. On Instagram, we're at Oral Health Foundation. And you can also find us on YouTube as well for oral health educational videos. And it's been fantastic. Karen, thank you so much for doing this with me. I've had a blast and I really hope that everyone has found it really informative. I know I have. So uh, yeah, that is all from us for now. Keep looking on social media for any other podcasts or videos that we do and we will hopefully speak to you soon. 